I think it's re it really is the lifeblood of the sport is these schools competitions and they are normally one of the most enjoyable ra races on the calendar especially the outdoor track and field uh, which is held at the end of May it's always a great race always very sunny down there as well so um, something to look forward to later on in the calendar but today intermediate girls our main teams this one our presentation at Roy uh, from Connacht Dominican uh, College Wicklow from Leinster uh, presentation Thurlis from Munster and Sacred Heart Oma uh, from Ulster so they've the four main teams and I see names like Avril Deegan down there from uh, she's from Abbey Leaks, I believe, but she's running in the presentation Thurlis Colours today. Um, and I see the likes, even the likes of Atten Ray there actually have two teams. They were went first and second in uh, in Connacht, so it's not often you see that. So they'll have plenty of athletes out here today, um, and obviously will feature pretty heavily in the in the, the, the team race with two teams in, in, involved. So obviously a very good program going out there if they can get manage to get two teams in over the line today. So at the moment. Um, that looks to be, if you're looking for Quiva Harrington, sorry, she's going to be in a Kloshta Pubble Bantry uh, uh, outfit. So that was the blue uh, of our last race winner there as well in the, in the, the junior race. So our junior race winner um, was, in fact, if I can find it there, which I cannot, our junior race winner was Dara uh, McElhinney from Kloshta Pubble Bantry. So he wore kind of a blue, a light blue singlet. And you can see that's already to the fore of this field with... Uh, Quiva Harrington. So uh, I know they're involved in the West Muscle Club down there with uh, Colette um, O'Reardon, I believe is her second name, but uh, they have very, very strong uh, middle distance and long distance teams over the last few years. So um, I know she's from Branchy originally as well, but very, very uh, strong uh, running out in West Cork at the moment. You're, proud, you're a proud West Cork a man, myself, man uh, si sitting here today. Well, if we can get two two in a row here for uh, for Colossal Public Bantry, um, that's incredible stuff from two different families as well. You often get the same family winning titles, but <laughs> it's uh, it's rare to have two from the same school that are not related going out and winning winning two team titles. That might be something to celebrate. I hope they will. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I know uh, our uh, our our title uh, our our bronze medal in the the Leinster uh, team for our junior team was uh, probably. Not as uh, so it was still celebrated in the school and people were mentioning it, but uh, we also are involved heavily in the rugby cup at the moment, Leinster Senior Cup and Leinster Junior Cup. So it's hard when other things going on in the school. Athletics often gets pushed to the side, but uh, in all schools. But uh, it's definitely if, if you come to a day like today, it's hard not to think that Irish athletics is in, in, in great nick. Because you see Brendan O'Shea there in the left hand side of your screen, a 148 man from uh, Wexford, um, and then Noel Guyton, whose son uh, Ian Guyton. Uh, ran for St. Aidan's in this uh, race over many, many years and has actually won uh, an Ireland School's 5K title, which you have won as well. Irish School's 5K, yeah. Uh, that's, um, track, yeah. that's a long way around when you're in secondary school, but it's a great, um, it's a great distance, the old 5K. And we have a fierce pace being set up front here and a lot of athletes following jumping right in and you're running by these the spectator crowded part of the course now and you can just you can tell that these athletes are being willed on immensely by onlookers and it's it can be a very emotionally charged race to schools and you've got coaches teammates schoolmates cheering you on you can get you can really really get into it so we have two leaders breaking breaking the, the pace for, for, the, for the lead group. And we saw in the universities race, the, crowd, the, the leading pack bunch up like this and a very, very bold tactical move made by Mario Sullivan to, to, to move the race on. And like we were saying, we probably won't see as much of that in the younger age groups but we never know that's the that's the beauty of of watching a race you don't know is somebody 
tucking in there and feeling good and just waiting to get around the corner and take off. <coughs> and we do have some sharp turns to negotiate. As you can see, the course is marked pretty firmly around the boundaries of the rugby pitch itself. So um, some sharp corners to negotiate. And when you're tired and you're trying to find the, your quickest way around the corner, you can often find yourself running right into right into the corner pole. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, it's quite, you've seen that happen now a few times, even Maria Sullivan, that last race, you could really see she was struggling when she was trying to take the corners and slipping and sliding a little bit, but uh, there's athletes to be used to that with a lot of these courses being very, very similar, but that's Quiver Harrington out there in, in the blue, uh, in the front of Colossia Pubble Bantry, and uh, she really, she's probably beaten a few of these athletes before in the past, and I think that's uh, Avril Deegan there in, in second place, uh, in the colours of uh, Presentation uh, Thurless, so they're probably the, the two uh, classiest athletes in this field at the moment, but Quiver Harrington, I mean, she's won the last four Ireland clubs titles, but I mean, most of these things, uh, eventually, with the exception of Shiva Cleary Butner, these things uh, can be a burden as well. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, you never know, like, um, this race uh, seems to be progressing in terms of finding out who who, who the medalists are going to be. Yeah, so on the left there, you can see that's Avril Deegan there in the in the red, and just on her right then uh, is um, Quiva Harrington. So it's still a, plenty involved in this race. I mean, there's six or seven girls there um, in that front front group, so there's still you know medalists outside of that top t top, top three as well that could that could get. Oh yeah, you. I mean, all the way you're going all the way back to probably eighth or ninth there, and and talking in terms of the the, the Irish schools cross country team, the top eight. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, just about in that group, and we might see the ninth fall off very soon, and we might have our top eight kind of relatively carved out for that Irish schools team. I was just trying to see there. There's usually a fairly good uh, level of athletes from Holy Flake and Tariff here, but I can't see anyone. I thought that girl in the the green just in shot a second ago was was a holy fake and tariff girl. It's normally uh, they produce many athletes. And if it's Patrick, he used to teach there as well in, in the past. He's uh, the DCU academy director, so he'll be uh, keeping a close eye and see if any of those girls turn up throughout the day. But um, at the moment, still Quiver Harrington in the lead with Avril Deegan just on her shoulder. So you see there, it's turned into a much, much bigger group. Those girls tried to get away over that last lap, but as we saw in the last race, there's plenty of. Uh, of, of people that can move up throughout the field, but we have about six athletes here um, still in contention for this title. And this is the part of the course that's a little quieter. It's not, it's not filled with spectators. So you get around to, to to these parts of the course, and it's you and your breathing, and the breathing of just the other four or five athletes around you, and that's all you hear. And that's when that's you. You, you can get into some. Um, get into some different mental territory on the, this side type of the course this side of the course yeah i mean i know everyone kind of uh runs quite well in, in the crowd and you always get a massive uh, uplift uh in your own i suppose confidence when you've got people shouting for you but there is always that part of the course that spectators have decided not to fill and yeah all you can hear is is that is you can always hear the, the things you don't want to hear yeah, that's your own thoughts normally <laughs> <laughs> so you cannot yeah you, you, that's where you start to doubt yourself and, and go Oh, am I struggling here? That girl doesn't seem to be breathing that much, or you know, she's taking the lead here, and, and you can't hear people shouting for you. Whereas I think when you're in the the, the funnel of, uh, of of spectators, you you kind of can't really even think. The secret is you just gotta think of donuts. 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 When you're on that side of the course, think about it. There's a donut waiting for you at the finish line, and you you, you run pretty quick then. Is this the uh, Brendan O'Neill special? I haven't tried it out yet. <laughs> I, it's something I want to do though. Well, as a European uh, gold medalist, um, was it something that? Uh, Maybe, maybe going forward that you might uh, might use or maybe suggest across the board to, that our Irish would like to use the donut technique. The donut technique. Well, I mean, like I, I, I think I'm thinking of publishing it in a research paper <laughs> in the next day uh, as a project. We're yeah, going to do a bit of research. Maybe team up with a PhD student. Here's Quiva Harrington here now. She's she's not thinking of donuts. She's thinking of, the, of that next round medal that's going to be at the in the finish line. And she has plenty of them. She's going to have to build an extension on her house with the amount of medals that she's selected lately, but. 
There's well, still a group of about four athletes there just behind her. I can see Avril Deegan there in the red starting to drop off that group slightly, but she's was just kind of struggling with the corners being a taller athlete. But definitely uh, these four girls almost ganging up on Quiva Harrington here. They're going to try and well, pick, off or pick her off in this last part of the course. Yeah, she's made a move now, and... Um, She's trying to make that decisive break. You can tell from the gap that she's formed um, that she's pushing hard for it now. And you can see in second and third, there's bid, bold bids being made to catch back up with her. So these medals are definitely up for grabs. And I mean, with this kind of situation, as we saw in the last race, it's always easier to, to come from behind and, uh, and start to work your way through the field. Like Quiva Harrington here has made, made the gap and she's starting to, she's got away in the lead, but she can't see anyone else, she can't be motivated by what everyone else is doing, whereas uh, everyone else behind her can see her and use her as a target to actually work towards. You can see, uh, I'll let you hop up and give us an idea of what's happening here in this last part before we get back on screen. We're getting into the business end of this race. And Quiva Harrington is increasing, increasing her lead by 30 meters. Avril Deegan has fallen off the pace, reportedly. And here we go. The stride is opening up. The style has been switched on. It looks like we have our winner, Mr. Duggan. Yes, and as she'll be well used to, the, to how this run, this uh, post-race uh, celebration goes, she's won a minor title, she's won a junior title, and now in her first year of intermediate, she's gone off and she's won the intermediate title. And she's looking strong. She's does her her form shows no sign of abating, and she's um, powering down this uh, finishing side of the course. Yeah, there's only about maybe 30, 40 meters left in this, and plenty of supporters out there, but. She's looked really, really good throughout and made slight breaks earlier on, but definitely uh, over the last maybe 600 metres has broke away from that field and shown how strong she is. Smooth, powerful, bold, decisive. I don't know about you, but I think they're the words I'd, cho I'd choose to describe that. Oh, without, without a doubt. That yeah. run by Quiva Harrington. Very, very uh, ass assured run from her there. She had no, uh, no issues on that one. Uh, like, she maybe as a former winner would have the the confidence to to be in that group and, and not be too worried whereas i think even if you look back at that last race maria sullivan even though she made the break she wanted to get away from those athletes whereas i think quiva harrington and herself there knew i can win this from the front or i can win i can win this by waiting and seeing and going maybe hard from maybe 800 800 out so she still made it fast from the start but she really made a decisive move with 800 yeah out. and she was in control she ran very smart um she didn't she didn't try and do anything too quickly or too soon. She she bided her time, and she was able to power home in the last half half lap. And that's really where a lot of races are won and lost. Yeah, I mean, I mean, everyone's going to be in contention uh, until maybe that last kilometer or so, maybe of the top at least, maybe ten or so. But that last kilometer, it depends on how how you get there as well. If you get there and you're struggling with a kilometer to go, or in Quiva Harrington's case, she felt in control and, and ready to go even with that last kilometre left. 